Join us for a hiking, fishing, climbing, backpacking, adventure, and big sky country as we head to Montana this week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. Welcome back to Backpacker Get Out More TV. I'm your host, Randy Propster, and this week I am so excited to take you on an adventure into big sky country. That's right, we're going to Montana for a little climbing, fishing, hiking, backpacking adventure. We've got it all for you. Before we get too far though, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn on the bell for notifications so that you'll be informed every time we bring you another new episode of the show. Also, hit the link that will allow you to sign up for this week's gear giveaway. Every single week, we do a giveaway. So if you signed up last week, that's okay. Sign up again this week. This could be your week to win great prizes from Darn Tough, Jet Boil, Lakey, Mystery Ranch, Oboe's Footwear, Sawyer Products, Sea to Summit, Yellowstone Select Kentucky Bourbon, and Visit NC Smokies. Speaking of visiting the NC Smokies, Steve and Jordan are great adventurers out there in Montana. Their backyard, this is where they started in Haywood County, North Carolina, before heading all the way out to Big Sky Country. And we want to share with you some more of the inspiration that they find right there in their backyard. And who better to bring us that inspiring moment than Steven Reinhold from Appalachian Adventure Company, who's going to tell us about one of the most popular drives that you can take on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Blue Ridge Parkway in Haywood County is the highest elevation area of the Blue Ridge Parkway. It goes all the way up to 6,053 feet at Richland Balsam. So whether you're out for a scenic ride, a picnic on the parkway, or you're chasing a sunrise or sunset or a scenic overlook, Haywood County is the place to be on the Blue Ridge Parkway. When you're headed out to Big Sky Country, stopping off at the base camp is a must. Talk about a retailer that can get you prepared for those big Montana moments, those big Montana mountains. And we were able to stop in and talk to Calman, who not only gave us the download on our destination and where Steve and Jordan were going to be exploring this week, we also got an instant upgrade talking about the Oboes Bridger and how a little maintenance can go a long way. Hello, my name's Scott Brown, and I opened the first base camp in Helena, Montana in 1975, and then we opened our billing store in 1990. When we first opened, we were primarily backpacking and Nordic skiing and rock climbing, and over the years, we've expanded our casual clothing and footwear and have a big gift department and I'm most proud of our staff. We have the best staff and know that it's so important to give great customer service and good product knowledge. My name is Calman. I'm a sales associate here at the base camp in Billings, Montana. And uh, what I love about Montana is just the wide variety of things that are due out here. We have a ton of national forests and national parks that are nationally known. Uh, and they provide not only great opportunities for backpacking, but all kinds of other uh, sports such as equestrian, uh, fly fishing, which we're kind of known about around here, um, regular fishing, uh, uh, mountain biking, uh, all kinds of different sports. So you're not really limited to one type of thing, as well as in one type of area. We have high desert, we have plains, we have mountains. The Beartooth Mountains, which is closest to us, are, is our tallest mountain range, which can, contains all of our uh, 12,000 foot peaks. So this is the Oboes Bridger and uh, it's a waterproof boot and Oboes actually is a company is based out of Bozeman here in Montana. Uh, the name stands for outdoor, Outside Bozeman um, and one of the cool features about these is all the soles of their, some of their soles of their shoes actually feature a topographical map of Montana somewhere in the state. Um, but uh, again, this is a waterproof boot, and uh, there's some things that you can do to upgrade the life of your waterproof boot. Um, all waterproof boots have an inner membrane uh, that uh, is waterproof, but they also have an outside coating, which is known as a durable water repellency, or DWR. And it's important to kind of reapply that every 100 miles or so. And that will help prevent 
what's called wetting out, where you get this false sense that your uh, foot is getting uh, wet from the outside, which it actually is the water is no longer beating up and rolling off, and so it just kind of sits there and cools off and gives the feeling of a wet foot. Um, so it's important to make sure that you kind of keep that upgraded. And then also a really good idea to make sure that you keep your boot clean. So after every trip or so, just brush it with a light, soft brush to get any um, hard materials off there and then clean off any mud or um, remaining sand just to keep uh, that uh, from degrading the material of the boot. And those are just a couple tips that you can use to upgrade the life of your boot over time. We also have a website www.thebasecamp.com and more information about either of our stores. We also have a lot of educational events. You can learn more about them at our website. Obos Footwear. We plant a tree for every pair sold. One million and counting. That's a lot of f***ing trees. In addition to taking good care of your shoes, taking good care of your feet requires also thinking about the right socks. So we were extremely fortunate to stop into another fantastic Montana retailer. The folks at Schnee's, they know all there is to know about hardcore outdoor. And we were really happy to talk with Kurt Smith, the owner of the great retailer there in Bozeman, Montana, who brought us up to speed with a little bit of a closer look at darn tough socks and how washing properly and the fact that they come to you pre-shrunk can go a long way to making sure your feet stay comfortable out there in big sky country. Good morning, uh, my name is Kurt. I'm uh, uh, Kurt Smith, president of uh, Schnee's here in Bozeman. And uh, uh, I grew up in Montana, pretty uh, fortunate to uh, be one of the few. And uh, I found myself on Main Street Bozeman and uh, been doing this for almost 29 years now. And uh, love what we do on Main Street here, uh, mainly in the footwear business, but uh, Schnee's is known far and wide for casual shoes, outdoor shoes, outdoor gear, um, hunting products, and uh, boots that we make here in Bozeman and boots that we make uh, in parts of Europe. In 1987, we began uh, building shoes here in Bozeman, right on Main Street, in fact. Uh, we had a store two blocks down the street. Brought a legacy outdoor store that had been here since 1946 together with Schnee's, and uh, that piece of the business is a big piece of, of what we do, the outdoors and outside. And uh, it was an interesting marriage because uh, we, we had been making boots uh, mainly for outdoors people, anywhere from ski hill operators to hunters. And uh, we had been doing that for since 1987 and uh, brought that together with the legacy outdoor and, and hunting business that had been here on Main Street since 1946. A little bit more about Darn Tough Socks. So we uh, have been a dealer of uh, Darn Tough Socks uh, for t 20 plus years, I would say. Uh, we were one of the first dealers of Darn Tough. Uh, the socks are uh, very, very durable. They have come with a lifetime guarantee, the first company to put a lifetime guarantee on a sock. But, um, you know, to get anything that's wool to last a long time, you just have to, to care for it. And uh, wool is a, awesome fiber because it doesn't doesn't stink you can wear it for multiple days i mean li literally a sock like this you can just rinse out in the stream air dry hanging on your backpack for the next 10 miles and it'll be dry but uh, if you're at home and you want to wash your socks uh, the best thing to do is turn them inside out gentle cycle warmer cold water and uh, you're good to go um, they're guaranteed not to shrink and uh, so it's one of our favorite products here at schnee's You can't take full advantage of hiking if you don't take good care of your feet, and that's why we love Darn Tough Socks so much. They offer a variety of colors and designs for men and women. They're super comfortable because they're made from merino wool blend that's also antimicrobial so they don't get funky. And best of all, the socks are so durable that Darn Tough offers a lifetime warranty. To learn more about Darn Tough Socks, go to darntough.com or click the link in the description below. 
It's impossible to think about a hike in big sky country without considering the fact that you're going to potentially see some pretty big bears. And that being the case, we were really happy to have Kurt Smith from Schneez bring us up to speed on this week's skills every backpacker should know, bear safety. Schneez is kind of right in the middle of uh, grizzly country here. You know, we got a lot of grizzlies to the north of us on the Rocky Mountain front up by the Bob Marshall and and uh, all over that part of Montana up to Gl Glacier and then down south of us, but Yellowstone obviously, lots of bears down there. So uh, we're very aware around here, you know, and uh, my tactic for handling bear, you know, getting out in bear country is typically a hike with groups, you know, that's, it's uh, very common to you know, that three or hiking in groups of three or four is uh, pretty safe. And so that's been my tactic in the past and then Obviously, uh, handling your food appropriately and uh, hiking with bear spray. You know, we, a lot of our customers don't go out without bear spray. And so uh, spray and uh, creating that awareness uh, with just having lots of people around. And there's some places around here that are, maybe there haven't been, it hasn't been proven that there's grizzlies. There could be grizzlies in there, but uh, that's where, usually where I hike. <laughs>
types of footwear for different types of bodies and things like that. And that isn't that. When I speak to them about that, that, that can go on forever. Um, and then finally, we were true to our community. And right here in Bozeman, like I said, is our hometown and a place we're really proud to be a part of. Investing in people here in town and organizations that are trying to make this a better world is what we're really proud to do. But also in the larger outdoor community about getting more people outside. Can we increase diversity, equity, and inclusion in the outdoor industry? We're working on solutions to try to do that. Um, we're really obsessed about that community because we're a part of it and that's why we all work here. Um, we wouldn't work here if we couldn't be part of this robust community. It's time to go backpacking in big sky country. Steve and Jordan head into the lakes where Steve gets his shot at some backcountry fishing Montana style. Hey y'all, this week we are in Montana. We are going out on the Continental Divide to uh, check out a lake and do some fishing. Yeah, why did you want to come do that? What else would you do in Montana? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so before we head out, we have to register where we're going and who we are so that the Forest Service knows. So filled out the form, throw it in there. Also, we are in grizzly country, so I've got my bear spray really close and we're gonna be sure to do a bear hang properly when we get out there. All right, so our hike starts out. We've got about five miles to camp. Um, we're going through a big old meadow. We've got lots of pines, a bunch of pine beetle kill, um, some wildflowers, and a bunch of butterflies too, right? Yeah, beautiful. So, uh, let's see what we get into the next five miles. My kind of hike. We'll be hiking by a creek that drains from the lake pretty much the whole time, so we don't have to carry a bunch of water. Looks like we had a wildfire or something happen a while back. it out. This is why we're careful with our campfires. This whole forest is burned to a crisp. So we're somewhere around two miles in trail is getting to climb a little bit but because of that got some pretty sweet little waterfalls and cascades off to the side check that out so we've been hiking through this forest for about three and a half miles or so and you know the, the forest the floor is green and lush and beautiful and thriving and then you just look up and just see like where this wildfire has hit and it's uh, kind of humbling honestly. I mean it's covering miles and miles of just dead trees. The entire canyon that we're in at some point burned even way out in those mountains out there. set up camp. Steve's going to do some fishing, maybe catch us a little dinner. Um, and we're just going to hang out by the lake. Got our campsite for the evening. Nice and protected by the trees. 
big old fire pit. The best part is it's right on the creek. Okay, so I have walked away from camp and I am trying to find a tree with a limb that will be good for our bear hang. Got it here, I've got the rock and the rope, everything loaded into it, including chapstick and wipes and sunscreen and basically anything that has a scent, it's important to put in your bear bag because bears will smell things that aren't food also. All right, here's what I'm looking at. You kind of want it to be about 10 feet off the ground and at least four feet away from the tree, so a pretty good size limb. Okay, so here's the first step is you wanna get a rock that you can throw easily and tie it to your end of your rope that the bear hang is not on. Because if you've ever tried to just throw paracord, it is not easy to get it up really high. So the rock helps give you some leverage there. So see how that, now I can go over here, grab my rock and ultimately pull up the bag into the air where hopefully the bears don't get it. dry grasshopper, my three weight, and uh, I think we usually let them go, but I think this one's gonna make for a good dinner. I think so. Why don't you show them where we're at, Tony? And by we, you mean Steve. I did nothing to help with that at all. Steve did all that. Look at that. So today, we're gonna do uh, a nice little dinner over the fire here. Uh, we're allowed to have fires in this area. You just gotta make sure it's cold to touch before you go to bed or you know, perfectly put it out. Which is awesome because we're also near a creek, so we'll just dump it out when we go to bed tonight. Uh, so we've got some, some wild caught cutthroat trout. I'm gonna season that with some sea salt, some garlic salt, uh, a little bit of pepper, olive oil, and then a dash of lemon juice. We're just gonna wrap this in uh, aluminum foil. Throw it right on the coals while we're doing the rest. Um, now we're putting the mini mode to work here, our jet boil. We've gone and cut some corn on the cob at the exact size so that we can fit them in here and make corn on the cob in the woods because that's a favorite. And we're also going to do some uh, some wild uh, rice medley. We'll probably throw some, some flavor in there too. Um, something I did want to talk about because I'm the king of breaking things. Um, sometimes our, our quick start right here you might bump it in your pack or something might go wrong with it, but you can actually pull this out and get it to touch again. That way you can get your spark back. So if yours isn't working, mess around with it a little bit. Um, whether you want to use needle nose pliers or sometimes you can even just bend it uh, and then we'll start firing right back up again. I also like to leave the tips up so I can grab them. That's a good tip. Yeah. Not oh, another good tip. If you are going to be cooking over the fire, Go ahead and just pull some of your coals out a little bit. That way you don't have to shove what you're cooking into the hottest part. You can just kind of bring the bring the oven to you. Bam.
This week on Camp Comforts, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the importance of a bag liner. Most people don't know this, but losing a liner can actually help protect your sleeping bag. So the bag I'm using on this trip is the Sea to Summit Flame. So it's an 850 fill down. It packs down super, super tiny and it's comfortable, it's warm. Um, one thing about down though is it can be a little bit more delicate and if you are walking around all day in the dirt You may think that you're clean at the end if you just brush the dirt off your legs But you're not fully clean and shoving your legs into a sleeping bag can actually almost be like sandpaper paper If there's dirt on there it can eventually rub away at the material and it can deteriorate your bag faster So if you use a bag liner it adds an extra layer of protection to your bag not to mention the fact that it can help you um, add another layer of warmth to you as well. So it can increase the degree warmth of your bag. Um, plus it's nice to kind of feel like you're wearing a sheet out in the back country. So. filters remove over 99% of bacteria and protozoa. So that includes things like salmonella, E. coli, giardia, things that can make you really, really sick, even though the water source may look super clean, super clear. Uh, these are all things that are hidden and can really ruin your trip or even multiple weeks of your life. So it's really important to filter your water before you drink straight from it. I like this Sawyer mini squeeze because of how small it is. It fits in the palm of my hand. It's really easy to use comes with these pouches. You just scoop water, the dirty water, into a pouch, screw your filter directly onto it, and you can either drink straight out of it or you can squeeze the water into a new bottle of yours. And so there's, there's some options there, but it's really quick, really easy to use, really lightweight. One thing is these pouches. They're made of a really durable material, so you definitely don't have to treat it like it's a newborn baby, but it they can pop if you're not careful on how you use them. So a couple tips to dodge the pitfall of a popped pouch would be make sure that when you're squeezing it, you are rolling. Use this roll action here to squeeze the water out. Do not ever twist it, okay? No twisting. Second thing, probably the most important thing, is keep your filter clean. Uh, you do have to backwash it every now and then to keep them clean, but they are rated to, to filter over 100,000 gallons of water if you treat them nicely. So back flush it with the plunger, just put clean water in the tip here, push it through the filter a couple good times until you see the, the dirty water starts running clear. And uh, yeah, then you can just keep reusing them for a really, really stupid long time. They're super awesome. Um, so if you keep it clean, then you're not having to squeeze the water out of the bag as hard. So if you're having to, screw this back on. If you find yourself really having to like squeeze really hard and you're getting like a trickle out of that, it is past due for you to back filter, back flush your filter. Um, the harder you're having to squeeze on this bag, the more you are raising your chances of popping it. The last tip, I have for you guys. Like I said, these are made from a really durable material, but at the same time, I try to treat mine carefully. I don't like throw it around or, um, you know, do anything crazy like that, but I store it with the lid off so that it can breathe. And I also put it in the front of my pack in an area where it's quick, easy access to get to because you have to filter water pretty often on a trail if you're drinking as much as you should be. Um, and that kind of helps protect it too. So just be mindful of where you're putting it, what, how you're treating it. But the biggest thing is keep your filters clean. From staying hydrated to staying bug free, Sawyer products have been a staple in my pack for years now. Today we're taking a look at Sawyer water filtration systems. Whether you choose to squeeze or let gravity do the work, staying hydrated is a key part of backpacking. And with their uh, lightweight design and ease of use, they've become my favorite pick for the backcountry. To learn more about these or any of Sawyer's products, head on over to Sawyer.com or visit the link in the description below. A trip to Montana would not be complete without stopping off at the trailhead. 
That's right, the trailhead, not a trailhead, but the trailhead, a fantastic retailer who will keep you up to speed on all the new gear and all the skills that you need to be safe and comfortable out there in big sky country. We were lucky to stop in and talk to Todd about the shop and then also hear from his associate, Doug, about a forgotten feature, the appropriate adjustment on the straps with your Lakey trekking poles. Hi, my name is Todd Frank. I own the Trailhead here in Missoula. We've uh, been around since 1974. We're in our third location here in Missoula. We started out as a specialty outdoor backpacking store sort of in the mid-1970s when people were really excited about getting out into the backcountry and we've, we've grown over that 40 some years now, almost 50 years, um, to have basically product in almost all the categories. We have now a separate boating store as well as a, a separate store for women's apparel in the mall and then our flagship store here in downtown Missoula. Uh, we renovated this old building that was built in 1892. It's one of the oldest buildings in downtown Missoula. I'm really proud of it. It's a great space for us to live in and be in, um, but we, we really spend all of our time working on being sort of the core backcountry shop in the western Montana area. We sell all kinds of outdoor products for backpacking and camping and river use. Uh, we, we root our business in high-end product from all, all kinds of companies in the industry. We've done business with hundreds and hundreds of companies over the almost 50 years we've been in business. Hi, this is Doug Hutchin, the trailhead here with Lakey Micro Vario Poles. I wanted to talk to you about a very nice, light, stable, and stiff trekking pole. Because of the quality um, of carbon and materials that Lakey uses, even for a larger person carrying a heavy load with a heavy backpack going uphill, you don't have a lot of flex and you don't tend to lose a lot of energy uh, from the pole. It helps progress you forward. Uh, and coming downhill, obviously, trekking poles reduce an awful lot of the toll on your knees when carrying a, a heavy load. One of the important things about using trekking poles is really getting a comfortable um, grip and a, a nice fit in your wrist loop so that you can, at times, relax your hands and not always have to death grip your poles, but, uh, but keep them connected and attached to you. They also obviously work really well as a, a point of leverage when you're pushing yourself uh, up and around various obstacles. In order to make that adjustment work, you can simply pull up on the top of the wrist loop. That unlocks it and allows you to adjust how long or small a loop you want for your wrist so that you can adjust, get that nice fit, lock it back into place, and hit the road for many miles in comfort. Yeah, you know, we're, uh, the Trailheads is sort of an old school store. We like to see people face to face, so we don't sell product currently on our website. We'll probably uh, end up there someday kicking and screaming about it. Uh, but we like to see people come in the store. We, we do respond a lot to email from folks that are reaching out that are going to be in the area, you know, helping them plan trips and that sort of thing. Um, but we like to see your smiling face inside of our store. Lucky trekking poles are a great addition to your pack to help with extra stability and help take the pressure off your knees and ankles. Lucky trekking poles come in a variety of lightweight materials and styles. The innovative handles are super comfortable and they offer a unique adjustable strap system. Plus, they break down really easily to store in your pack when you're not using them. To learn more about the products from Lucky, head on over to Lucky.com or click the link in the description below. During our visit to the trailhead, Doug was able to let the gear do the talking by allowing the Mystery Ranch TerraFrame 50, and in particular, the importance of that expandable frame sheet to speak for itself with just the specs. One of the great products from Mystery Ranch is this TerraFrame 50 backpack. It's a three zip feature. Uh, as we all know, zippers can be a source of failure point, and when you're out in the woods, having a failure in your backpack is a major bummer. By using this three zip system, it takes any curves and stresses out of the zipper, allowing easy and full access to the entire inside of your pack so you can stay organized and also get to whatever you have, whether it's the bottom of your pack or the top. 
We all know how hard it is to see in the bottom of a pack when we can't find things. So having this tri-zip really opens up that backpack to make it easy to pack as well as to unpack. One of the nice features of this Terra frame is also the overload shelf. Based on some of the more specialty packs that Mr. Ranch offers uh, for specialty end users, they developed a way to carry significantly larger loads, heavier weights, and odd shaped items by using this load shelf system. By unbuckling all of your connectors of the pack to this frame and then extending these webbing straps down here, you can extend this load shelf. Allow you to then take a large extra item, a hard case, an extra pack, a small pack raft, put it in there, and with a 50 liter pack that's far more manageable to carry, still be able to lash your extra weight or extra goods, extra gear onto that pack and away you go. Mystery Ranch is on a mission to make the world's best backpacks for a wide variety of outdoor enthusiasts. Built to be extremely configurable with a concentration on organization and accessibility. Plus, these bags are bomb-proof. They are purpose-built to assure not only usability, but durability. To learn more about Mystery Ranch backpacks, visit mysteryranch.com or check out the links in the description below. Steve and Jordan just couldn't take off from Montana without adding another element of adventure, climbing with the folks from the headquarters of Mystery Ranch, where they learned that Mystery Ranch is not only making awesome day packs and bomber overnight packs, but they're also putting together some pretty cool packs just for your time on the wall. All right, so we are in Montana, a place called Bear Canyon. We are going uh, climbing today with Ryan from Mystery Ranch. Should be a good time. Woo! Are you excited to go climbing today? Yeah, I am. Yeah? Yeah. You're gonna beat me again? Yeah, I am. You think so? Mm -hmm. We'll see. Ryan from Mystery Ranch, hey, thanks so much on? for taking us out. Yeah. We're having some pretty serious truck envy. We're having everything envy in, in Bozeman, <laughs> it seems. Yeah, we're just, we're just in Bear Canyon. Um, going climbing just just about what was it like less than a mile so yeah. less than a mile up to up to the crag so yeah we're just getting ready to go got the tower 47 all loaded up or just put some stuff in so yeah we're gonna see if we still got it <laughs> now, you can just put your put all your draws in here and get everything organized and you can stick um, your chalk bag your harness and your shoes in your bag Hey, my name is Dana Gleason. I build backpacks. Uh, here at Mystery Ranch, we've been at it for a while, the last 20 years, and uh, we have uh, come to make a little bit of a name for ourselves. Uh, we build uh, backpacks for many different kinds of hardcore users. Uh, we're uh, quite uh, famous in the outdoor space and we certainly started out climbing, skiing, and backpacking through uh, an uncomfortably large part of the 20th century. But nowadays we do not just outdoor gear, but we build for wildland firefighters, we build for folk on the military side of things, what we call the mission-based business. And we also build for hunters who are some of the hardest core users in the backcountry. Uh, so behind me is our Bozeman facility here. Uh, this is quickly becoming our world headquarters uh, as it is. Um, we do everything here in Bozeman, which is very unique for this type of facility in that we do uh, production, design development work, uh, sales and marketing, warehousing and shipping. Um, kind of rare to have that kind of facility that does everything like that. So it's one of our competitive advantages here. Uh, the Bozeman floor uh, consists of people that we pull in uh, from the community and teach how to sew. Uh, believe it or not, sewing is not a skill that everyone knows how to do anymore. Uh, so when we get our hands on them, we bring them onto the floor and teach them how to be the best sewers in the world. When we are looking for fabrics and materials, 
Some of the biggest characteristics we look for is just the burliness of the fabric and how well it's going to do and how much abuse that fabric can take. Um, and then from there, we kind of see what the weight is. And in some, some instances, we do get lighter weight materials and put them in different places because we know that they're not going to be as high abrasion. But for the most part, we want to make sure that all of our fabrics and materials are the best that they can be so that they don't break down on the customer. Mr. Ranch's design philosophy is, I think it's really sprawling in terms of like one unified design theory is just to, uh, you know, listen to users and figure out what's missing and what we could do. Um, you know, we love to get outside and we're constantly thinking about, you know, how things could work, how things could work better. And, you know, we take a long tradition of building gear that, you know, for myself started with learning from my old man's mistakes. You know, I, I was fixing patterns and that's how I got into design that were being made by the original Dana and you know from there I just kind of needed to iterate and do more things so you know like my design philosophy came from him which is just get something that works works well you know try it out do it again try it out do it again you know the fun of um, ideation iteration whatever you want to call it we uh, end up doing the same class of equipment for all the different people that we work with, but they're using this gear in many different ways. We're talking uh, backpacking and uh, cruising along in a lightweight manner. We have to build the packs uh, very lightweight and we have to build them so they will still carry up through a 40 pound load in a way where your body will be able to forget it. But when we're dealing with folk on the fire side of things, we're using uh, what would in theory be a lighter weight load, but they're carrying uh, saw, or uh, they're, they're carrying gear for sharpening chainsaws. They are carrying the fuel. They are carrying a six pound shelter to uh, give them a half a chance of surviving if there's a burnover. And how we build gear for them actually comes out very different than how we build gear for a great weekend uh, out along a river. Um, on the military side, we again end up having to build gear for people who have to use the gear no matter what the conditions are and have to carry substantial, very large loads over difficult terrain. And we have found that uh, we have been able to structure gear that makes their days much uh, easier to bear at the end of the day. And each of these things is a different world. And that we are uh, exposed to those different worlds and that we are actually able to make a difference for these uh, other groups of people mean that we end up getting a lot more techniques and tricks that we develop. And this is able to cross-pollinate across everything we do to allow us to make that difference for you at the end of a very long day. And uh, it's pride and a pleasure to be able to do it. After an adventure in Montana that included hiking, climbing, fishing, and backpacking, there's no better way to celebrate than a toast. Just got off the trail and have found ourselves a spot to rest, and I think we have earned ourselves a bourbon drink. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make the hot whiskey cider. Uh, this is one of my personal favorite drinks because it's easy and it tastes really good. Um, so I've got hot water already in my mug here. I'm not gonna make you guys painfully watch me boil water. So hot water is the first thing that you need. Second thing you need, the most important part, in my opinion, is the Yellowstone bourbon. Uh, their distillery is in Lebanon, Kentucky. It's Limestone Branch Distillery. Um, they make about two barrels of bourbon a day because they're really focused on quality over quantity. So they're a small batch distillery, um, kind of nestled in Lebanon. It's a really awesome spot. So we're gonna pour some of that in there. And then the last ingredient 
is the cider mix. I, whoops. I made this one myself. Um, it's basically just nutmeg, sugar, cinnamon, and ground cloves. Um, kind of tinker with the ingredients. You can find the recipe online really easily. If you don't want to make your own, you can also buy pre-made powder packets um, online too. So just dump some of that in there. You can always add more. So I would recommend starting off with less because you can add more. Mmm, smells like apple cinnamon. All right, cheers. Yellowstone bourbon is handcrafted in the state of Kentucky. These small batch whiskeys are the work of seventh generation craftsmen, resulting in a unique taste perfect for the trail. Plus, a portion of every bottle sold goes to helping preserve our national parks. Cheers to that. To learn more about the products from Yellowstone Bourbon, head on over to limestonebranch.com or click the link in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. Please make sure you hit that like button. Do us a favor, share this video with your friends and family. We want to inspire as many folks as we can to spend more time playing in beautiful places like Big Sky Country of Montana. Next week, we're gonna move over to the Cascades in Washington State, another of my favorite backpacking playgrounds. So please come back and join us. Between now and then, get outside, enjoy some fresh air, be kind to one another, and we look forward to seeing you next week for another episode of Backpacker Get Out More TV.